this morning. If you don't have a bulletin this morning, Brother Sean Horvitt is going to get the stack of bulletins. And if you need a bulletin, just raise your hand, and he'll make sure that you get one. I want to make sure everybody's got a bulletin this morning. And uh, anybody need one, just raise, wave, wave, and let Sean know. He'll be glad to get you a bulletin. Just want to make you aware of a few things. First thing, our Christmas play has had to be postponed until January the 8th because we've got some kids who are very, very sick. And so they're going to postpone the Christmas play until January the 8th, okay? So mark that down and, and, and keep that in mind. Uh, we will have Bible study this Tuesday at 11 o'clock, Hosea chapter number 9. And uh, then make sure you start out Christmas Day right, worshiping Jesus, one service next Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. One service at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, special music with the choir. And uh, I promise you, I will have a short sermon that morning because ain't none of y'all going to be paying no attention to what I say no how because <laughs> it's Christmas Day. But we will have one service at 10 o'clock next Sunday morning. And um, then um, make sure you check your Christmas cards in the men's classroom. I do not want to be delivering Christmas cards on Valentine's Day. <laughs> so check your uh, box in the men's classroom and uh, go in there and get your Christmas cards and pick all those up and make sure you have those. And so those are the major announcements I need to make. So Diane's going to come and lead the choir in the song.
so much for loving us, Lord. Thank you for sending your only son, Jesus, down the cross for our sins, Lord. We're so thankful, Lord. Lord, I ask you in Jesus' name just to please bless our service here today. We ask you just to please have full reign, Lord. Pray you continue to be with the singing of your praises and the uh, preaching of your word, Lord. Pray that you just have your will and way. Lord, I ask you to please be with our prayer list this morning, God. We ask you to please be with Irene Bell, her own Barbara Clarkson, Matt Bryan, Phyllis Clary, Jack Dale, Scott and Scotty Dean, Linda Durham, Joyce Earp and her hip, uh, Garland Emerson, William Cletus Evans, Faith Ann Harley, uh, Billy Hedrick, Audrey Hopkins, uh, Maureen Johnson, Beverly King and Sinus, uh, Carol Martin and family, uh, Gary McCullum, Angeline Moon, John and Linda Mitchell, Betty Mitchell, Keith Moorfield, Nancy Newton, Loretta Nichols, uh, recovering from um, uh, knee replacement, Ashley and Tandy of Angie Oates, James Price, Cheryl and Mal Porovinsky, Robert and Vicki Reed, Nat and Barbara Saunders, Bill and Judy Snow, Andrew Underwood, Evelyn and Longton, Leon and Connie Wiles, Harold Yancey. Uh, we ask you to please uh, move uh, young preachers over. We ask you to please uh, uh, move someone to uh, get back in church. Please with the family of Brenda Gregory. We ask you to please with Nick Mannigan, Lord, coming home Monday. We ask you to please with Tammy Gregor, Jerry Herden, Steve Unthink, Gary Simons and his foot. And we ask you to please be with David Jones. Lord. We ask you to please be with all these requests and just answer each one according to your personal and holy will. We ask you to uh, be with us all, Lord. And if someone in your house today does not know you as Lord and Savior, we pray that today be the day of their salvation. Lord, we love you and thank you for all you do. For us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, this time turn it over to Diane Choir. school were 100% classes. We had three visitors, 
for a total of 63 in Sunday school this morning. Give yourselves a hand. But don't forget, if you're missing Sunday school, you're missing a good part of our worship service, so please make plans to be here for our Sunday school. All right, in birthdays this week, we have uh, Robin Shields on Tuesday, December the 20th. Did I miss anybody? All right, I don't see nobody else. All right. Well, let's sing happy birthday then. <coughs> this week. Oh, yes. All right. How long y'all been married? Don't sit down yet. Ten years. All right. That's good. All right. Don't forget our tracks. Our missionaries this week are Earl and Barbara Clarkson. Be sure to pray for them and pray for all our missionaries. Now it's time for us all to get a hymn book set. Turn to page number 431. We'll sing all verses of Silent Night. Let's all stand.
And we need to thank God for that today. All right, every head's bowed, every eye's closed. Brother Sean, why would you come ask God's blessings on the offering? All right, Heavenly Father, thank you for your goodness and your mercy, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name, bless us off and bless the giver, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name for souls to be saved and lives to be changed today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Humbug, but I don't say humbug 
to the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. The world believes we as believers are humbugs, shams and deceivers, when really the world is the humbug. 2 John 1, 7 says, For as many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in his flesh, this is a deceiver and an antichrist. Dreams 
they certainly weren't ghosts. There's no such thing as ghosts. There's only one ghost, and that's the Holy Ghost. Say amen. And his conscience was bothering him. Men are doomed who do not know Christ. That's the truth of the day. This specter's message was the opportunity for change in one's life to end at death. That is the goal of the Christian is to get the gospel to a lost and dying world so that at death they won't spend eternity in hell. They will spend eternity in heaven. 2 Corinthians 6.2 For he saith, I have heard thee in a, in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Scrooge misinterpreted the specter's mission. He had sympathy for him. Scrooge needed to realize the peril and the danger that he was in. The specter was not there for his own good. He was there for Scrooge's good. So does the world misunderstand the message of the gospel today, that they need the message of the gospel. He said, Mark me, in life he never rose above the limits of money-changing hold. Man's welfare should have been Marley's business and Scrooge's business, and it should be our business, the eternal welfare. This was a chance for change and a hope for escape through salvation. Scrooge's reply, the same reply we get from men today, never mind. They don't want to deal with themselves. No man wants to deal with his eternality. They not want to deal with his sin. Man would rather not go to the way of the cross but as Marley said, without, without the specters, he would have no hope. Without the scriptures, this world has no hope. And we're the ones to get the scriptures out. Without the cross of Calvary and the blood of Jesus, man has no hope of escape of eternal hell. John 14, 6 says, very clearly, Jesus saith in him, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Example, with an example 
that man can be changed. Scrooge's father had changed as a witness to his, by Sister Fan. Scrooge was robbed of love as a young man, and Scrooge learned to adapt to loneliness and live in loneliness. We're born without a relationship with God, lonely for the Lord. Man learns to adapt with, to loneliness with, in, in his spiritual life, and then he sees no need of a relationship with God because he adapts to that loneliness. Scrooge said, nobody cares, nobody will ever care, and that's what the world says today. Nobody cares, nobody ever will. Fan, the witness, said you need to forgive and forget. Yet God is the one who's willing to forgive and forgive us and forgive our past. I tell you a shilling ring, Alice, but one day it'll be a gold one. We're not rich enough. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. But I mustn't accept it. Why not? Because it's not good enough for you. Oh, no, no. Uh, because I'm not rich enough for you. Oh, it's a shame. Of course not. But you're still so young, you may have a change of heart one day. Dearest Alice, if ever I have a change of heart towards you, it'll be because my heart has ceased to be. Tempter bragged on him. You're smart. 
and you're no fool. If money ain't everything, I do not know what is. That's a lie, but it's a tempting lie. He was right. He did not know what was everything. Philippians chapter 1, verse 21. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. 1 Timothy 6, 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Not here. Yes, here. of repeating itself. Satan doesn't want you to understand that. He doesn't want you to understand that. You see, he saw death was reality. Life is short and sacred. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. Scrooge was reminded of his own mother's death. He was shown how his temptation and his own twisted and demented thinking robbed him, robbed him of hearing his sister's last words. How many times has Satan robbed people of hearing the truth that would help them? Satan's way always robs you of the opportunities of life that in labor of love brings real peace, happiness, and fulfillment of life. The, he lost the opportunity to love her son. And love helps us find the right path in life. Alice. The same Alice you swore to love to all eternity, Ebenezer. She is not changed by the harshness of the world. Another idol has replaced me in your heart. 
A golden idol. It's singular. The world who can be so brutally cruel to the poor professes to condemn the pursuit of wealth in the same breath. You fear the world too much. Well, with reason. But I, 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 I am not changed towards you. Aren't you? Our promise is an old one. It was made when we were both poor and content to be so. If you had never made that promise, tell me, would you seek me out and try to win me now? Of course I would. No. If you were free today, would you choose a darless girl with, with neither wealth nor social standing, you who now weigh everything by gain? It would bring you nothing but repentance and regret. That is why I released you. You know I'm right then. I must bow to your conviction that you are. May you be happy in the life you have chosen. Thank you. I shall be. Goodbye. Scrooge had lost the sight of love. Alice had not. Scrooge's fiancée was not changed by the hardness of the world around her. Scrooge had changed toward people in general, not just Alice. A golden idol had replaced Alice in his heart. Money and the desire for more of it had changed him. Scrooge feared the world instead of trusting God. That's where a lot of people land today. Psalm 111, verse 10, For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Romans chapter 14, verse 23, For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. With coldness, Scrooge walked away from Alice's love. Without hesitation, he accepted Alice's release. He did it quickly in fear she would revert and he would not receive his release. He was cold. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. And all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Who's that, the doctor? No, sir, the undertaker. <laughs> you don't believe in letting the grass grow under your feet, do you? Ours is a highly competitive profession, sir. Is he dead yet? I'll have another look if you like. No, don't bother. I'll see for myself.
lying in the bed had a whole different perspective than the man who was fixing to leave and live. He was dealing with his mortality, Scrooge was not. He was witnessing to Scrooge, and Scrooge didn't understand. He couldn't grasp what this man dying had to say. Scrooge was asking if there was anything he could do out of a cold-heartedness of obligation, not out of compassion. This was duty and not compassion. He wanted Marley to hurry up and die and get out of the way, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Marley said, while there is still time, was his statements to Scrooge. Right your wrongs, was Marley's plea. Hearken unto me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock whence ye are, he are hewn, and to the hole out of the whence ye are digged. You see, Scrooge excused his sin, as most men always do. We cannot be right all the time. Nobody's perfect. We're no worse than the next man. You're not being compared to the next man. You're being compared to a holy God. At the judgment, we'll stand before God, a righteous God. Marley stated clearly, we were wrong. Save yourself. Takes repentance to get you there. 
He said, you have chosen not to seek him in your heart. They are man's. They cling to me for 
yet to come. And you're going to show me shadows of things that have not yet happened, but will happen. Spirit of the future, I fear you more than any other specter I've seen. But even in my fear, I must tell you, I am too old. I cannot change. <laughs> it's not that I am impenitent. It is just that I... <laughs> Wouldn't it be better if I just went home to bed? <laughs> no. Leave me then. Man never wants to face the truth. Man never wants to face what he needs to deal with. Can I learn? Can I change? I do not know. You see, to learn is to change. The truth is what teaches man he needs Christ. Scrooge was warned of ignorance because he dwelled in the ignorance of God's love and God's truth. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Listen to the gospel of Christ and the words of eternal life. Here the specter uses his own words against Scrooge again to show him there's no hope in and of himself. Ignorance of the God's word leaves a man in want and leaves a man in need. Then arrives the cold hand of death. When faced with death, he knows that it's an irreversible fact of life. One and one will die. He's overwhelmed by his own inability to change himself, and no man can change himself. Only Christ's blood can change you through faith in Christ. He was impotent. He was feeling sorrow and not regret. So this next specter had to take him one step further. His question within himself was, how am I going to make it from guilt to forgiveness? Avoiding the truth doesn't make it go away. His last words to the cold hand of death was, Lead me then. Those are the sweetest sounds a soul winner can ever hear. Lead me to Christ. <laughs>
die. That's why he held on to that which he could not keep and really expected to see himself there under that clock. Why hold on to a wicked life you cannot keep forever? All his money was left behind. No one was even at his funeral. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 7, For we brought nothing into this world, and certain, it is certain we can carry nothing out. <coughs>
got to do is call on Jesus. Turn to him. Accept his death, burial, and resurrection. Preach, I want to be saved this morning. Well, pray this prayer silently while I pray aloud and Christians are praying for you. Just say, dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I believe Jesus died to pay for my sin debt that I owe. I believe he was buried to give me forgiveness that I want. And I believe he rose again to give me eternal life, which I so desperately desire. I ask you to save me right now. I turn from sin to the Savior. I repent of my sins and accept Christ, death, burial, and resurrection, and accept him as my Savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Now help me serve you the rest of my days. In Jesus' name. With no one looking around, every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here this morning and you ask Christ to save you, I'll not come to you, I'll not embarrass you, I'll not call you by name. just want to thank God with you and give you a chance, the first 60 seconds, to thank God for saving you. Is there one here who raised hands and said, Preacher, I prayed that prayer, and I accepted Christ, and I'm not ashamed to pray for me as I start my new life in Christ. Would you slip your head up so I can pray for you this morning? Just slip it up, slip it down real quick, and let me pray for you. Preach, I prayed that prayer. I asked Christ to save me, and I'm thankful for it. Anyone that way? Have me here this morning say, Pastor, I know I'm saved, but I haven't been spreading the light like I should. I haven't been loving God like I should. And because of that, I haven't loved others like I should. But I want that all change. I want to be a witness so if I run up on the screws, I'll know how to point them to Jesus. I want to live my life to make a difference in the world around me and bring people to Christ. If that's the case, this morning these altars are open. I pray you'll come. You'll stand, sit, do whatever you need to do and ask God to help you be a better servant this Christmas. Maybe you're here and you'll say, Pastor, there's somebody heavy on my heart that I really want to see saved. And I don't know if it'll happen this Christmas or not, but if it takes setting the light starting this Christmas to whenever, I want to make sure this Christmas I'm the witness I should be to them. Why don't you come pray for them this morning? Kneel, stand, sit, whatever you got to do. Pray for those lost loved ones you know need to be saved. Father, take this invitation. Lord, help Christians come pray for themselves. Help them come pray for the lost. If there's one here that has questions about their soul, may they take Brother Esther by the hand. Let us take the Bible and show them how they can know for sure they got a home in heaven. Take this invitation, I pray in Jesus' name. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Stand to your feet. God spoke to you. Come speak to him. He's here to hear and answer your prayers for yourself and your lost loved ones.